Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 754. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about why you need a coronavirus care plan. Now, this is a plan that deals with your health care. And I'm going to talk about this whether you get coronavirus or not. That's irrelevant, actually, because this is the time to have the conversation with your loved ones, with your family, with your partner about your health care, because we're all talking about it. We're all talking about our health and we're making plans about our health. And God forbid something happens to you, you need to have a plan in place. So I thought this would be a good time to talk about it. And I'm going to share with you an article from MarketWatch. But before I do, I just want to explain a couple of things about what's called an advanced healthcare directive. It's a legal term, and it means that you have the ability to determine what happens to you at the end of your life. And this is really important because there's a lot of different circumstances that can happen that can cause really unfortunate situations at end of life. For example, let's say two people are in a relationship, but they're not married. They might be same sex, it might be different sex, doesn't matter. But you have two people coming together in a committed relationship. Maybe they've been together for years. That also doesn't matter because in the eyes of the law, your family is your legal decision maker. But maybe you don't want your family to be your legal decision maker. Well, if you don't have a legal document in place that gives someone else, your partner, the right to be your legal decision maker, then your family is going to be making your decisions for you when you're in the hospital. Let's say you were in a terrible accident, God forbid, and you needed to be put on a respirator. Whether to be put on the respirator or whether to be taken off the respirator, that can all be spelled out in your advanced healthcare directive. If you don't have that, your family would have to guess. And if your partner disagrees with your family, well, that puts them at odds. And it also might mean that what you've told your partner you want, they're not able to execute because they don't have legal rights if they're not named in your advanced healthcare directive. So do you see how this can get very complicated if you don't have the right legal structure set up? It's the place where you get to say whether you want to ever be put on a respirator or not. It's the place where you get to say if you want to be resuscitated or not. It's the legal document that lets you decide how you're treated should some unfortunate accident happen and you're not able to speak for yourself. But it also gives you the right to have the people that you want with you at your time of end of life. Because again, if your partner doesn't have the legal right to be with you and to be making decisions for you, it can turn out that an estranged relative that you haven't even talked to for a long time is your legal decision maker. So those are the kinds of things that we're going to talk about. And we're also just going to open up the conversation about your healthcare in general and what you want and what you don't want so that you do tell people what your feelings are on the subject. So let me share this article with you from MarketWatch and you'll understand more of what I'm talking about. It was written by Dr. Christine Nguyen and she called it, Why You Need a Coronavirus Care Plan and How to Make One. And then the subtitle says, Being Prepared Can Help Reduce Your Stress Too. And it says, Tom Reynolds jokes that his doctor says he's the healthiest sick person we know. The 71-year-old Cocoa, Florida resident has gone through 20 medical procedures. I've not been a good steward of my body, he admits, 
My wife and I were thinking, what if we get the coronavirus? We both have compromised immune systems. Stress about susceptibility to COVID-19 may actually make a person more prone to illness. One way to manage stress is to take control of your health. Reynolds maintains a sense of control by being proactive. He has been discussing his health and care plans with his loved ones for years. They're familiar with them. I don't hold anything back, he says. Reynolds has been clear with his children about his health care and end-of-life wishes. The coronavirus pandemic spurred him to put everything in writing. Through an AARP email, Reynolds learned about CAKE, a free web application that guides adults through all stages of health care, estate, and memorial planning. Before the pandemic, according to a survey by the Conversation Project, an Institute for Healthcare Improvement initiative to have every person's wishes for end-of-life care expressed and respected, 92% of people thought planning end-of-life care was important, but only 32% had told others their wishes. Only 18% of people had talked to a doctor. What stops people from preparing for the inevitable? Fear of making a mistake, says Reynolds. At any stage of life, a medical crisis might render you unable to make healthcare choices. Because of visitor restrictions to healthcare facilities during the coronavirus pandemic, it will be harder for family or other advocates to be present. Sometimes decisions have to be made quickly. That said, doctors often don't know a patient's wishes. In today's medical landscape, if you go to the hospital, your primary care doctor probably will not be the one taking care of you. Doctors can change daily, so you need to make your wishes easily accessible. People of all ages have become more interested in making care plans. Advanced care planning involves learning about the kinds of health decisions you will need to make, selecting your choices and letting others know. Clear information and a definitive person who can speak on your behalf can help avoid arguments between family members about your wishes. The Conversation Project has starter kits in over 10 languages that can jumpstart talking to loved ones. When the pandemic hit the U.S., the organization had 43,000 more visits to its site than in the same period in previous years. On April 4th, the group released a guide specific to COVID-19. Within two months, it was downloaded 7,607 times. If you or your loved one needs a COVID-19 care plan, here's how to get started. Number one, think about what is most important should you become seriously ill. If you want to keep decisions from becoming overwhelming, it's more effective to focus on overall goals rather than specific treatments. How independent do you want to remain? Do you want to be able to communicate with loved ones? Do you want to be free from pain? What makes life meaningful? Number two, Pick a person who can be your health care decision maker if you become too sick to care for yourself. This person is called a health care proxy, medical power of attorney, or health care agent, and will need access to your medical health information. Pick one person so decisions won't get confusing. It needn't be a relative or partner. What's more important is that the person is willing to make decisions for you based on your beliefs and wishes, not theirs. It's a good idea to have an alternate as a backup, too. The healthcare proxy should be able to assertively communicate with authority figures such as doctors. Being decisive is a useful trait since medical decisions often need to be made quickly. Once you've made the choice, it's a good idea to let others know so everyone can get used to the idea. Name an alternate, too. Three, talk about care planning with your designated healthcare proxy. Understanding your family life, your upbringing, your favorite activities, and your intellectual interests helps the person make decisions that are consistent with your goals. Tell your proxy who you would want them to contact should you become ill. Number four, list your health problems, medications, and doctors. Even with the ubiquity of electronic medical records, most doctors are missing some information about their patients, Only you know every health provider you see and every medicine you take. And I just want to pause there and say how important that is. You know, people are on lots of different medications. They see different doctors. And really, it's all in your head or in your address book or your contacts in your phone. 
but other people don't have access to that. So you really need to write that down and give them access. I mean, someday your life could depend on it. Number five, make an appointment to talk to the doctor. Medicare pays for appointments to manage chronic conditions and for discussing advanced care plans if you're 65 or older. These kinds of appointments don't even have to be in person. They can be done via telemedicine. If you filled out a care plan form, like this one from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, a physician can review it and make clarifications. Ask your doctor if a POLST, P-O-L-S-T, which is more specific than an advanced directive, is right for you, and let your doctor know you have a healthcare proxy. So it says, a POLST form tells all healthcare providers during a medical emergency what you want, whether you want to go to the hospital or you want to stay where you are, whether you want CPR or not to attempt CPR, where there are certain medical treatments that you want, or if there's a specific care plan that you want provided. Number six, share and regularly update the information. Every state has free downloadable forms for declaring proxies and making advanced directives. If you spend time in more than one state, consider making forms for each state you live in. You usually don't need a lawyer, just two witnesses who aren't related. Review it every few years. When you become eligible for Medicare or Medicaid, get married, divorced, or get diagnosed with a major illness. A web application like CAKE, that's C-A-K-E, is easy to modify anywhere with internet access. It's great to have all this information in a binder, but will it be easy to find? Send documents to your healthcare proxy, your alternate, and your doctor. Email is a great way to do it, so these people can easily save your plan on their computer and tell family and friends what you've done. End of article. So you can check out the CAKE website. You also may want to make a legal document, the Advanced Healthcare Directive. And just doing a little research online, legal sites such as LegalZoom offer you the ability to create an Advanced Healthcare Directive package for as little as $39 or in a more comprehensive $49 plan. So, I'm not promoting these, I'm not getting paid for this, I'm just suggesting that this might be an inexpensive place for you to start and to get some of your healthcare information written down. These are uncertain times and this pandemic came out of nowhere and it's possible that other things could be coming, we don't know and I'm not trying to scare you. But I am saying this is the time to have the conversation with your loved ones about your health care. This is the time to get it squared away. This is the time to have the conversation to make decisions and to get the legal work done so that your wishes are fulfilled. Because if you don't do this, you could be in a situation where someone you don't want making legal decisions for you about your health is exactly who is. So I'll leave a link to this article in the show notes so you can read it, you can see some of the resources they recommend and some of the links that you can click through to. I just thought this was a time to talk about this topic. It's never easy to talk about end of life or wills or advanced directives or healthcare. It's not often a fun topic, but it's something that is necessary. It's something that we step up, we take care of these things because Often it's our loved ones who have to make these terrible decisions and have these burdens and have things happen to them if we don't do the right things, if we don't take the right action and put the right legal process in place. It's often our loved ones who are the ones who are hurt because we didn't do what we should have done. So I'm encouraging you to be responsible, to think about these things, talk about these things, and maybe take some action that you might not have taken yet. And if you have taken your action already, then good for you, congratulations. And you can check that one off your list. And if you're looking to increase your financial knowledge, check out all of my podcasts at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. And I wanna let you know you have the ability to win one of 25 prizes I'm giving away in August. 10 of my You're Already a Wealth Heiress, Now Think and Act Like One books signed by me, 10 of my Wealthy Mindset Blueprint audio sets for a wealthy mindset valued at $197, 
and five one-on-one 30-minute wealth mentoring sessions with me. All you need to do is leave a podcast review for Be Wealthy and Smart on iTunes if you have an iPhone, or if you have an Android, leave a podcast review for Be Wealthy and Smart at stitcher.com. It's S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R.com. And if you've read the Wealth Heiress book or listened to the audio book and leave a book review on Amazon, that will get your name into the drawing two times. And if you live outside the U.S., you also can leave a review and qualify for the contest. And then be sure to check back on August 31st when I announce the names of the winners. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.